Hey guys, this is Issues with Toddy One Skip, and I am Toddy One Skip. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for allowing me to be part of your day. I really appreciate it. To all my subscribers, thank you so much. I'm at 370 last time I looked, and as you guys know, about nine days ago, I had 22. So thank you so much. Thank you for giving me a chance. It means the world to me. And as I said, I'm going to give 100% to this channel. So I am working on... And I'm excited about this. I am working on um, a video, I keep saying that, about a specific cult. But today I wanted to talk about confusion, I guess. What do we expect from people that we hold to a higher regard? People that are on the verge of being cult leaders but for some reason, that's not really what we call them. But these people do influence thousands, if not millions of people. And they get away with stuff. And unfortunately, we've allowed that while we've watched it happen. So when I was younger, and I watched people on TV with their smiles and everything. I always thought everybody was so kind and so nice. And they'd have to be because they were coming into my living room. And I mean, I'm talking about when I was a kid and I had a crush on Donny Osmond. And I opened up the magazines and these kids, these child stars had these huge smiles. And sometimes they weren't children. Sometimes they were 18, 19 years old, but always geared for the younger female audience in Tiger Beat, 16, Teen Beat, all these magazines that I don't even know are, exist, are in existence anymore. I think on the online they are. So as I got older and I started hearing, you know, that they're just people. And some of them make big mistakes. How do we go about, how did we automatically just give them, put them on a pedestal and expected something of them and were blind to who they really were? How did that happen? So the definition of a cult or to be a cult leader, there was few things that things had that were in common when I looked up the definition and it was charismatic personality they had to be charming obviously they had to be charming or they wouldn't or you wouldn't want to spend time or listen to them right so they had to be charming and this isn't on there but usually there was something attractive about them you know something that you found attractive about them whether it be their personality or their looks they expected obedience once they let you into that like inner circle, humiliating you often, you know, often humiliating the members to, to break them down so that they are superior, right? Uh, sense of entitlement, whatever they want, they could have. Why not? They're entitled to it. Of course they are. Don't ask questions, give, just give them and take sexual advantage. A lot of them take sexual advantage. Well, in the cults that we followed suit and that we hear about, and like Jonestown, you know, I didn't get into great detail about that, but yeah, Jim Jones. In most of these cults, there is um, not only a monetary um, attraction or uh, inspiration for the cult, but there's often a sexual one. So, so forty three years ago on December eighth, ten, eleven o'clock at night, the streets of New York were calm and it was uh, it was a nice night, quiet, very quiet. John Lennon was coming back from his recording session with Yoko, and they were just going to go home. He wanted to see his son, Sean. He was very excited about the album that he was working on. 
And when he stepped out of the car, somebody said, Mr. Lennon, and he turned around and John was shot. And John didn't die on the sidewalk. You know, he grunted, Yoko screamed, and the security at the Dakota building called the police. The person that killed John Lennon said that John Lennon was a sellout. He had an expectation in his head of John Lennon and John failed him. And because of that, in his head, he felt like John shouldn't be breathing anymore. How does somebody give that much control to somebody? I mean, clearly, guy's not right in his mind, but a lot of people follow John Lennon. I'm a fan of John. When John Lennon died, I remember being incredibly sad because huge fan of John Lennon. You hear his songs in movies that you don't even know. What a brilliant lyricist. But he was still just the guy who made a lot of mistakes in his life. And he would have been the first one to tell you that. And in the meantime, in somebody's mind, John did them wrong. How, do, how does that compare to cultish behavior? Well, I don't think John Lennon was a cult. He had a following. People were attracted to him. People did what he said when he was rallying and uh, for against the Vietnam War. He made suggestions people followed. As a matter of fact, the government was uh, phone tapping him and the government was trying to get him out of the country. They wouldn't give him his residence. So he had power. He just wasn't trying to manipulate people in such a way. But people still gave him power. He just didn't do evil with his power. You know what I'm saying? So then you get people like, wait for it, Jimmy Savile. So there's been a lot with Jimmy Savile now in the USA. Jimmy Savile, just so you know, was huge, huge in the UK, huge in, in England. He was, he was bachelor, he was a bachelor of knights. He was knighted by the monarch as somebody of good character. For six decades, this guy was, abu was abusing, essaying thousands, like thousand, hundreds. They say probably a thousand people. Six decades, he had access to hospitals where children and the elderly were. He didn't pay for this when he was living. He died at 81 years old of pneumonia, and it was only after that that people stood up. And so many hundreds of people stood up and said, that he did this to me. And there were people that made complaints when the guy was alive and they still gave him access to children and the elderly and disabled children, children that couldn't even fight the guy off. And nurses knew, and they told on him, and nobody did anything because he was in the living rooms of people. He had a show on called Jimmy Fix It. It was a children's show, and what they did was People would write letters to Jimmy. Children would write letters to Jimmy about wishes that they wanted, like Make-A-Wish Foundation, only they didn't have to be sick or anything. Make-A-Wish Foundation, great foundation. My family was involved with that for years. So um, I'm, not, I'm just using it as a comparison. His show was if somebody wanted something, they would write to Jimmy. Jimmy, fix it so I could go to Disney World. Jimmy, fix it so I could... That's what the show is about. Jimmy uh, making kids' wishes come true. He abused those children. Not all of them, 
Not only females. Jimmy Savile gave Prince Charles and Princess Diana marriage advice. The guy was never in a long-term relationship with a woman except his mom. How did he get that access, and what made anybody think that he should be giving anybody marriage advice? He was never married. No substantial relationships. You see what I'm saying? We give people like that a little bit of uh, control, and, and people see it in the media, and they think this guy's safe. He's got to be safe. He's friends with Prince Charles. Look at all the pictures of him and Prince Charles. If he wasn't safe, Prince Charles would be nowhere by him. You see how people, by not doing anything, and I'm not saying Prince Charles knew, but there were a lot of people that did know, and nobody did anything, and this guy was found out after he died. After he died. So, in the human world, which we live in, the physical world, he never paid for his consequences. And yet, somebody said, that's okay, we'll take pictures of you with these people. And by doing so, you made other people victims. Things like that, they happen. It happens. When we treat people like they're better than or more than or more important than, that means other people aren't so important. That's not the way it should be. Why? Why did we allow Jimmy and people like Jimmy to have access to the most vulnerable when we heard rumblings? Why was Jimmy more important than the people? There had to be a dozen people that had made complaints. How come those, those complaints weren't heard? Was it because it was going to be embarrassing for the UK government? I'm not blaming anything on the UK. We could come back to the US and we could go at it here. We have R. Kelly. Right? We have R. Kelly who got young kids, got them to um, turn away from their family. Jimmy Savile, he preyed on people that couldn't really fight for themselves. His manipulation wasn't so much for the victims as it was for him to get away with things. The manipulation with somebody like R. Kelly was for the victims. He, he, he told the victims things and then humiliated them. And we know that. I mean, we've, we've, we've heard what R. Kelly did. And then he, stood in front, he sat in front of Gail King and he cried and said, how could this be true? How could this be true? How does a guy who writes some beautiful songs, R. Kelly wrote some beautiful songs, inspiring songs, and yet there was this monster inside of him. Would you consider him a cult leader? He had a group. It was a small group, but he had a group of, of young women that he controlled and he humiliated and he took advantage of sexually. I think so. I think so. And then we have somebody like Ian Watkins. So Ian Watkins, another UK bloke, guy in a rock band. And his fans would give up their kids to him. If I take you, your kid comes too. And even his own children who he impregnated, he impregnated and then for the sole purpose of doing that to babies. And yet he was on stage and people 
all the adoration in the world. Is he a cult leader? He got people to give up his kids, their kids for him, to do wrong things. And, and to make you believe, it's okay, there's nothing wrong with this. What? A baby? There's nothing wrong with that? Really? A baby? He was just stabbed, by the way. He was just stabbed in prison not long ago. He was, somebody grabbed him and held him for hours, for hours, and just repeatedly stabbed him. He survived it, but he stabbed him. I hope it hurt. I hope it hurt real bad. The Grateful Dead, all right? The Grateful Dead. I know people that follow. They're deadheads, right? Is that a cult? Uh, now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with being a deadhead. I don't see them going around and hurting people and killing people. But they're following a band around. They go and follow concerts and they're groupies to them. What's the difference between a groupie and, and somebody who's in a cult? Isn't it about how much you're willing to do for them? Isn't that up to you? We have a, a false sense of safety when we see people on our television sets, when we buy tickets, when we grow up thinking, wow, Donnie Osmond. Donny Osmond happened to end up being a really good guy, but not all of them. Look at um, the guy from, uh, what is that show where, uh, the Drake Bell, isn't it Drake Bell? The one that um, was getting into DMs of kids that are 16, 17 years old and he's in his 30s. He was on the cover of a magazine. Love letter from Drake Bell. And there's this picture with, I love you so much, I think of you often, Drake Bell. Same thing with Donny Osmond, same thing with Leif Garrett, same thing with all of those people. Harry Styles, Justin Timberlake. And we think, wow, they're great people. No, great looking face maybe. We have to know when we're younger and we start putting those pictures on our wall. Our parents need to come in or parents that are listening to this need to come in and say, you know, he might not be the same person that you like. You know, you gotta remember it's just a person. And nobody's, import nobody's um, opinion is more important than yours. You know, when you see old videos of like the Beatle fans that are sitting there shaking with the Beatles and they're hysterically crying because they're seeing the people that they love in, 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 in person and they're passing out. What's that about? It's the same power. It's the same energy that is in following somebody and having that kind of emotional connection that you think you have to, right? I've been fans of a lot of people. I have never been starstruck and I've met some people. I've met some people, but I've never been starstruck. Um, my dad used to hold an event in Colorado. It was a tennis event big tennis fan, me, and um, Martina Navratilova was one of the people in this exhibition as well as Monica Seles, and there was a couple other um, tennis players. And Martina Navratilova remembered me. She met several people the night before. I had never met her. She met several people the night before, and she happened to be, the next night, she happened to be running down a hallway um, in a locker room area to get to the locker room and I was standing on the um, against the wall all like all of a sudden I heard these like massive um, uh, 
massive foot, you know, foot stomps of somebody running. I, I just heard somebody running down a hallway and I got out of the way. And as she ran by, she said, oh, hi. And she said my name. And I stood back and I was shocked that she remembered who I was. Just shocked. Like she met a lot of people. How'd she remember my name? And with that, I could have flown from Colorado back to New York without an airplane. I know how we feel when we feel somebody recognizes us and we feel important, right? I don't think that I felt any more important than when I really, really liked somebody and knew somebody and they recognized me as somebody that might be important or somebody special in their life, right? But when it's somebody that's behind our, our television screen where a lot of people, you know, seem to like and, and just admire and are overwhelmed with admiration for this person. And when they point to you and head and shoulders against a against everybody else. How does that make you feel when you're... That's what cults do. They love bomb you until they get you. <laughs> and as we all know, most cults are... Things that we call cults, most of them are not good. Most of them are not good at all. But I think it starts with the minute we start thinking that they're better than us in any way. Whether they, oh, they have more knowledge, they have all the answers. Nobody has all the answers. Nobody has all the answers, right? But look at what happens when we let the people that we trust through the television set, or we trust because they were knighted, or we trust because they're on talk shows talking about their great albums and their philanthropy, right? And we don't pay attention when somebody says, wait a minute, there's something wrong there. There's got to be so much for somebody to say, wait a minute, let's stop, let's step away, and let's see what's going on here. We just don't do that and we have to start doing that because now on the internet we can reach a bunch of people a bunch of people but they're not always experts they don't always know the answers and they certainly shouldn't be put on a pedestal and they shouldn't be taken that every word they said is 100% true You have to look at things before you say, yeah, that, that person, I, I believe in what they're thinking. I, I believe in what they're saying. They're good people. You know, before you decide somebody is a good person, you need to check out a little bit of research, right? Especially today, because we can look people up and we can see what's up with them. Yet today, cults exist. There's new ones coming about, old ones that are still in existence, and cult leaders that are just getting more clever. We just have to be careful. And for children, and when we follow bands and we are fans, you know, a difference between a fan and a sacrifice. Don't be a sacrifice to anybody. And nobody should ask you to be a sacrifice for them. 
Guys, I, I just wanted to share with you um, some things that I, I hope you found, um, you know, thought-provoking and that you found interest to. Guys, this is Issues with Toddy One Skip. I am Toddy One Skip. I thank you so much again for letting me be part of your day. All of my viewers that are um, Jewish, happy Hanukkah. Please don't forget to like, subscribe to this channel. And I'm hoping that the next video is the cult video that I'm working on. Thanks, guys. It's Toddy One Skip. Don't forget, be better today than you were yesterday but not half as good as you're going to be tomorrow.